Hello and welcome to Maybelline Tadam Badi. Today we're here with a very special guest who has just done her professional debut in the musical Annie. She's travelled to many different areas to put on a great show and now she's here with us at Maybelline to give a short interview. So without further ado, let's get on with it. How are you Zarangi? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, I just want to ask, how old are you? I'm 11 years old. Wow, 11 years old, you're out there doing uh, professionally performing for the musical Annie. I'm impressed. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'll talk about I'll talk more about Annie later on in the interview. But first, I want to ask when and what uh, sparked an interest for you for acting and singing. Um, I think well, I, I think it started it off with singing, and mm. I always found myself like just singing everywhere I go, okay. like in the house, just randomly. But mm. like, um, I think I just started to like feel this passion that like I wanted to take it out to the world a bit more mm. rather than just keeping it within myself. And how did you do that? Well, I went to a drama school okay. which enabled me to get an agent mm. and then she started me giving these auditions and then that's how I got to do Annie. Okay, so out of acting and singing, which one do you prefer more? Both on stage and otherwise? I'll say I'll have more experience with singing and mm. I think acting just came as a package with okay. um, singing. Just comes that. naturally, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I do enjoy singing a lot and I think that's what makes me really happy, mm. like just when I'm singing. Um, but I do like acting a lot as well. Singing is a big part of uh, performing, right? Yeah, it's In a big part, musicals. especially musical theatre, yeah. Mm. Okay. As well as um, acting and singing, I'm sure there's a lot of dancing to do, right? In musical theatre? Yeah, a okay. lot. So how did you uh, train yourself to become a better dancer? Um, I mean, I haven't been much of a dancer particularly. Mm. Most of my dancing was like through freestyle when I was younger. Mm. But um, I did go to Jaya Ravindran's class okay. and he helped me a lot to like grow as a dancer and mm. to like learn how to do choreographed dancing because oh. I struggled a bit with that. How long have you been going to GS classes? About two years. Oh, okay. Started and off with online and then mm. I went to his classes. Mm. How much have you improved, do you think, since you were younger? I think I've improved a lot, like mm. just like I'm much more lively when I'm dancing mm. and I pick up stuff a lot quicker. Okay. Right, Sharangi, in um, our Tamil community, there aren't many people that have gone into theatre, especially musical theatre, um, so, I just want to ask about your family background. Uh, how is it like? Is there anyone in your family that's involved with arts or theatre? or uh, Do you think that's helped you? Uh, my dad is involved with like, um, in the Tamil industry with um, music. Okay. But I think um, since like, I'm more in like, the English, um, like, because Annie is like an English um, mm. musical. Um, so, I don't know if that's particularly like, helped me. I think my mum's helped me a lot as well because, like, she's she helped me with um, like dropping, picking me up, and like all of those little stuff that make a big difference. So you have huge support from your mum. Yeah, a lot of support, mm. and she's like really nice to me. Mm. Is your mum uh, involved in any uh, theatre cool stuff? So my mum used to like take me to musicals in my childhood, me and my sister, and we like we love musicals, and I never knew that I'd be in one. <laughs> <laughs> so ever since you've just been watching musicals and just wanting to be in one this one day? Yeah, like mm. I just look at them and just imagine that. Mm. Okay, um, before Annie, your professional debut, which is uh, a couple months ago, right, you started, um, where and what have you performed? I haven't actually done anything um, about musicals mm. before this, but I but have... Any other performances? I've done um, a voiceover. Uh, okay. So I did like a pilot for um, this show called Mora and Sora. Mm. Um, um, we did a pilot and they were going to sell it to Disney, but oh. Disney didn't end up uh, buying it. Oh. So I did one working day where I did a pilot episode and I think that was a really good experience as well. Mm. Does that help you grow? Yeah, mm. it's, it's helped me like to know more about the industry, I think, mm. and they like put a lot of knowledge into me. Mm, that's good. What about in school? Have you done any performances? Yeah, yeah, I've done mm. acting um, in school. 
Um, so in year five, we did Mary Poppins. Oh, okay. And then in year six, we did Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. What character did you play? So in Mary Poppins, I played Bert. Okay. Um, and in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, I played Caractacus Potts. Mm. Did you enjoy them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit more about your experiences while you were performing at school. So it all started in Mary Poppins, where I mm. played Bert. And of course, that's a male character. And since um, it's a co-head school, like it was quite unusual for them to pick me. Mm. Um, and like, I was a bit like upset because I was I'm a bit confused as well mm. why they picked me. But then um, on the day, everyone was like amazed and like they were like, wow, we didn't realize you had that talent. Um, and I think they encouraged me a lot to do what I'm doing now. Mm. So that inspired you and helped you out to yeah. go on in the future, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm. And what about the other play, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Yeah, mm. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So, um, fun fact, mm. um, the person in the movie who plays Bert also plays um, Caractacus Potts in the movies. Okay. Um, yeah, his name is Dick Van Dyke. Mm. So, like, and everyone in my school is saying, like, Oh, you're him because like I've played him two times in like oh. two different musicals, which you is this, like uh, yeah, his it's, in, it's quite like yeah. crazy actually. Mm, that's <laughs> good. Right, should we talk about Annie now? Yes. Okay. So um, you were the main role in Annie. Yeah. It's not easy, right? So Annie. Um, can you tell me a bit about the process of how to get into the play, Annie? Yeah, so as I said before, I have um, an agent mm. and she asked if I wanted to um, be involved in the Annie auditions because they were holding auditions oh, okay. and then I said yes and then that's where it all began. Mm. So how was the audition like? Like what was, uh, when you got there, what, did you know what to do and were you all prepared? Yeah, they, like, they kind of told us what to do before mm. a bit but it was kind of a bit on the spot, okay. like what you do in the auditions. Mm. Some of it was like already set up and some of it is like, they'll ask you questions, you answer them, mm. kind of like that. Yeah. Did you expect yourself to get the role of Annie? No, definitely mm. not. Because it, it's like so huge. It was just like a big fantasy kind of mm. thing. And I, I never would have guessed I got it. So how did you feel when that fantasy became true? Um, I didn't even know what to feel. I was like, <laughs> I was really amazed mm. and I was shocked. I couldn't believe that like I was in like a West End mm. performance. Mm. It's a big thing, right? Yeah. Mm. I kind of still can't believe it now, you know, <laughs> even when I look into the crowd when I'm performing. Mm. Okay, so what next? The auditions are done. You've got the role. Now what? What happened next? So I did my first show in Cardiff, Millennium mm. Centre. But before that, what about the rehearsals and stuff like that? Oh, How yes, was the experience? The rehearsals. Um, the rehearsals, it was quite tough because mm. um, it's a lot of stuff to take on board at, at once. Mm. But um, uh, yeah, it was a lot of, of stuff to do. Uh, I, the rehearsals went on for two weeks okay. of like non-stop. I went after school. Mm. Like I'd finished school early so I could go to rehearsals and then it ended quite late. Um, in the evening, uh -huh. so it was quite a lot, mm. but yeah. Yeah, what kind of uh, stuff did you have to do for the rehearsals? Like, were there a lot of lines to learn and uh, singing and that kind of stuff? We kind of like learn the lines beforehand mm. right. so that like um, we can focus on like stuff that I can't, I don't know from the script. Mm. As in like there's, I, I know my lines from the script and I can do that when I'm at home, but mm. like when I'm in rehearsals, they teach me stuff that I wouldn't know from the script. Mm. You said you had to uh, travel from school a lot every day, but how did you manage both school, uh, work and the any stuff? Yeah, it was a bit hard, but mm. um, we got through it. It was okay. It all paid off, right? Yeah, it mm. all paid off. So when you first um, got the role of Annie, uh, did you tell your school? You did, right? Your school and your friends? Yeah, I did. The yeah. day after I found mm. out that I got mm. it. And how did they react? Like, how did they support you? Um, I did tell them that I went to the, um, some people, I told them that I went to the auditions mm. beforehand. And like, 
they were like finding it really hard to believe as well and it was like all just a really good experience and uh, it was really like it's, it's quite a nice feeling to like tell someone your achievements I feel like yeah. and mm. they're all like really supportive and happy for me. Mm. How did your teachers support you like your drama teachers and music teachers when they found out that uh, you got the role of Annie? Um, they were like really supportive and like mm. they were asking if like they could help out with stuff mm. and all of that and they, they were like asking me questions and mm. yeah it was a lot. Okay. <laughs> Right, now you've finished auditions, you've finished rehearsals, and now you're ready to become Annie on stage, right? Yeah. So when you performed at Cardiff, your first performance, how was it like when you first got on the stage and you saw the crowd? And yeah, how was it like? It was, it was like, it was quite overwhelming because like mm. the crowd was so huge. It's, it was about um, 2,700, I think. Oh, wow. And it was one of the biggest venues in the whole um, show. Mm. Um, and the fact that that was my first venue was like incredible and uh, it was so grand and like the fact that like the spotlight was on me like usually I'm the one who's in the audience but like mm -hmm. I was on the stage instead. Yeah, <laughs> so was that different? Like, how did you feel? It was a lot different but um, it's so much better. It's just like you've got that in excitement um, and just looking at everyone um, mm. And it's just amazing. You didn't feel scared or nervous one bit? A little bit, mm. but because I, I did have that like thought, like what if I make a mistake and all of that, because like, mm. it was my first show yeah. and I wasn't used to all of it. Mm. But I was mainly like filled with excitement, all of mm. that adre adrenaline. Mm. So that helped you to perform well, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell me a bit about um, the other people involved in the play. Uh, how many characters were there? Around like 30, 40. Oh wow. Okay, tell me a bit more about the co-artist and the actors that were performing with you. So I really love this show called Strictly Come Dancing mm -hmm. um, and Craig Revel Horde, who's like one of the most famous judges on that show, is now like acting with me. Oh. And I think it's like really cool because like I was watching him like on mm -hmm. TV and now I'm acting with him and it's like mm -hmm. so different and also he's quite like a mean character on the show. But like he's actually so nice in real life. Okay. So. Mm. What other parts uh, did you enjoy while performing or rehearsing? In like um, any music or live band or stuff like that? I actually only got to perform with a live orchestra on the oh. day of the show. Oh, okay. So yeah, but um, it's a lot different from from backing tracks, and like mm. I quite like the like the live orchestra because sometimes they like go with you like for stuff. Mm, okay, so they help you out while yeah you like they for example like you know in the middle of in the middle of songs like mm. they'll have these um talking bits oh, okay. and like they'll like um prolong like um so they wait for you to finish yeah they'll your... wait for us to finish our dialogue and then it'll go back to the song mm. that's nice yeah way to carry on the musical right yeah mm. so how many songs did you sing by yourself in the musical two Okay, so um, could you sing a little part from each song for me? Okay. Okay. So there's this song at the beginning of the musical called Maybe. So it goes like... Maybe far away Or maybe real nearby He may be pouring her coffee she may be straightening his tie Maybe in a house All hidden by a hill She's sitting playing piano He's sitting paying a bill So, that's it. Wow, that was amazing to hear, like here in the studio. I can't imagine how it would be to hear you live, like on the stage. I have to come watch you sometime. I'm actually performing in Wimbledon. Oh, when are you performing? Um, November 9th, 10th and 11th. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? November 9th, 10th and 11th, Sharangi is going to be performing Annie in Wimbledon. So make sure you guys go and watch her and support. Right, so do you want to uh, sing the second song? Alright, so this song is called Tomorrow. So, 
Tomorrow is all about optimism because Annie is very optimistic. So, yeah. Um, the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick up my chin and grin and say, oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. So you gotta hang on till tomorrow, come what may, tomorrow, tomorrow, I love ya, tomorrow, you're always a day away. Whoa, this song had such open vocals, right? Is it, was this difficult to learn or sing? Um, I actually knew the song quite well before I even did the auditions because I, oh. I used to love Annie the movie as a kid. Mm, okay, that's good then. It was yeah. easier for you then. It was easier, yeah. Mm. <laughs> just, like, just say a few dialogues from Annie. Like your favourite parts. Uh, so the beginning bit. Okay. So like er everyone's like having this fight in the orphanage. Mm. And I just go, mm. pipe down all of ya! Mm. Go back to sleep! To get them... To go back to sleep, okay. and then what happens after that? Yeah, and then like um, there's the youngest orphan, which is Molly, and then mm. she's like crying in the corner, mm. and then like I come over to support her, and I'm like, it's all right, Molly, mm. Annie's here. Mm. Whilst we're on the topic of singing and music, um, have you been to any vocal training classes, or are you naturally just an amazing singer? Um, well, in school, um, I had a vocal coach um, yeah. uh, in primary school, but now I'm finishing my time in primary school, going to secondary school. Oh. And now I have um, a new vocal teacher because um, obviously I'm not going to be with her anymore. Mm. So, yeah, I've had a bit of vocal training, but... Mm. Who's the vocal teacher? What's their name? Kate. Okay. And where are they from? How did you get uh, contact with Kate? Um, my agent told me um, about uh, that she was really good and mm. then she like just... Mm. Okay, so your agent's been helping you uh, a lot? Yeah, with my everything. agent helps me a lot mm. with all of this. Mm. Okay, so um, let's go on to uh, after Cardiff, where else have you been performing Annie? So after Cardiff I went to Southend mm. and then I went to Bromley. Okay. Then I went to Norwich, and mm. then I went to Milton Keynes. So you've done so many performances there. Yeah, yeah. So as you went along, did you become more confident? With yeah, definitely. Just mm. with everything, just I just got a lot more used to it. Mm. And it just allowed me to have more fun with it, because mm. I, I'm not that nervous anymore when I'm mm. performing. Yeah, it got easier, right? Yeah, a lot easier. Right, in West End Theatre, I think you're the first Sri Lankan Tamil to act as the main role in um, musical theatre. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, to be supportive of that, who, like, out of those you know, who all came to watch you, your performances? So, my number one fan would be my mum, probably, mm. because I think she's seen the show a lot of times, maybe like five or six now. Mm. And I've only just started, really, so that's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, my dad and my sister came to see the show in Cardiff because it was my first show. Mm. Um, and then I've had Jaya come to Milton Keynes and like other friends and family over the time. What did they all say once they saw your performance? Yeah, they, they never really knew that I was like into all of this and mm. they were really shocked. Mm. Um, and it's just really cool to see their like reactions and everything. Like, they're really, like, shocked. Mm, okay. Okay, so you've been performing since start of July, almost two months now? Yeah. Um, so where else are you going to perform and how long is this tour going to last? So it's going to last until November. Oh, okay. So, mm. yeah. Um, where are you performing next and what other places? This Thursday, I'm going to Dublin again. Okay. Um, and then 
after that, I'm going to Manchester. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, so you have a lot of travelling to do then? Yeah. Is it Sheffield, Wolverhampton, okay. Wimbledon, and then Bristol, and then all of that. Mm. So it's a lot. Is it difficult travelling everywhere? Um, do you like travelling? Yeah, I, I quite like it, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of long journeys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so. Right, so we've talked about your um, theatre and musical journey uh, a lot, and I'm really impressed so far. Thank you. Um, would you like to take this on as a career in the future? Yeah, definitely. Mm. I mean, I love it right now, so I mm. think I'd love it when I'm older as well. Mm. So normally town people go for a doctor or engineer or those kind of jobs. Uh, what kind of support do you have from your family? Are they really supportive for you to take this on as a professional career? Yeah, my mum is super supportive and mm. she always just says that um, do what you really um, want to do mm. and like not to like follow like all of these expectations and that mm. and just to follow what your heart says. Mm. That's good, right? And this is what you want to do? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I wish you luck for the future when you uh, take this on as a professional career. But um, there must be other uh, young Thai people that want to be like you and get involved in uh, musical theatre. Uh, could you just explain uh, to them the process of getting in or just any advice you have for them? Oh, well, for me, um, personally, I think that um, musical theatre has given me um, so much more confidence and I really love doing it. And I think that you should just really pursue what um, you enjoy. And I really love musical theatre and you should like get involved, you know, like um, join local um, theatre, um, local schools, like theatre schools and like um, do what you love. Thank you, Sharangi, for coming here uh, for an interview today. We are really proud of you after hearing all of this and 100% I will come to, uh, where is it, Wimbledon, right? Yep. Yeah, Wimbledon and come and see you. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. And if you do watch Sharangi, please share your experiences with us, Mavely, and we will pass it on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed our chat with our young performer, and I'll see you in the next Tarambadi show. Nandri Varadkar.